go. So push out. Push out. Yeah. Okay. You go straight down. Aha! Now that feels good. What's going on guys? Here we are at Gag Down Strength in Strong Island, New York with Jamal the legend. Look, legend. all hail Jamal. Yes, <laughs> guys, look, I think he is, I can't think of anyone that can pull more sumo than you. It's a bit of a cheater stance. Um, my coach does a cheater stance as well, so I have respect for it. I love John, um, so it gets a pass in my book. But look, uh, 1,050. 1,050. No, I can pull a 950 conventional. There's a post, uh, Instagram post. Yeah, dude, your deadlift is unreal. Like, <laughs> conventional and sumo are both unreal. And he's only 250, guys, like 110 or 15 kg. Absolutely unreal. Uh, I love how the sport is progressing. It's constantly bringing more legends like Jamal out, and I can't wait to see where it's going to be in 10 years, uh, who's going to be stepping into the scene. But for right now, and for a long time, I think, you're the king of sumo deadlifts. You know, you are definitely the king. I'll hear Jamal. Um, and we're going to take some heavy singles today. But Jamal isn't going to do anything backbreaking. He's going to be doing like a RP7 or so for what I've heard. Yeah, like, it should be around 840 to 860-ish for a single. Maybe more, depends on how I feel warming up, so. Yeah, uh, no PR attempts. Um, for me, on the other hand, I'm going to be like 920 for a triple or so, something like that, reverse band, right, John? I have another one today, actually. <laughs> but I do know I'm doing reverse bands. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm pumped to get to work. Uh, don't feel too great. I almost with Michael Yellow in the game a couple days ago, feeling it. But no excuses. Back and hips feel good. So I'm ready to deadlift. Let's do it. Let's go. Yeah. All right. And you want to do the 181 all time of record, right? All right. Squats? No, 165. 165. I was going to try to do some, uh, make a, some waves in the 65 class. Discover that you were gifted for sumo over conventional. Did you start pulling sumo to, in the beginning or did you start with conventional? So I started with conventional. So I did my first two powerlifting meets conventional. And after my second powerlifting meet, I started to transition over just testing out the waters. Um, I learned that I could recover better from sumo and heavy squats instead of doing heavy conventional and heavy squats in the same training cycle. Okay. So me doing heavy squats and heavy sumo didn't like butt heads. So they both progress equally. Mm, okay. But when I did heavy squats and heavy conventional, one had to suffer. Gotcha. So I had to basically pick the core. Okay. Okay. And uh, when uh, did you first pull 800 sumo? How old were you? I was, I believe, 22, 23. Okay. So in about only three years, you put like 250 pounds. Yeah, because when, when I first started training, I worked at a, a military base, and only thing we had were hex plates yeah. and bad gym bars, no grip. Oh, hex plates are the worst. <laughs> and that's what I trained on for the longest. Oh, okay. Until I bought a rogue uh, stiff bar, and I bought like some kilo plates, and I started training on those. That's when my deadlift started taking off. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and a bit. I'd like to see how you set up for sumo. And uh, did you actually? I know now you don't do much of warm up with your deadlift, but is there any point in your training throughout the week do you do any like 
thing open up your hips? Like, how do you get into such a good position? I used to think that I needed to do a ton to get warmed up. But now they're like, once your body starts warming up, your muscles automatically loosen by themselves. So once they loosen, you can just kind of get the bar, grab it, and go. Because like it's a lot of stuff you do it kind of tire you out. Like you say, you go in there and do a 45 minute warm up before you even touch the bar, you're tired already. But that's wasted energy. So I want to use that energy to put, put more weight on the bar. So that's what I do. Okay. Good. Okay. Awesome. All right. And John's up and his match underwear. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, look at that. This is actually the diaper. This is the, the diaper on <laughs> top of the underwear. Dude, those hand mounted feet. Oh, right. yeah. Honestly, those things are aggressive. They're like shredded. 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 <laughs> a sumo pull in the presence of Jamal and get a 10% bump in power. <laughs> Minimum. Science. Yeah. It's not pro science, guys. It's, <laughs> it's bad. For real. Well, um, I was going to say uh, pound for pound, Jamal's conventional 950 is actually amongst the best. I can't think of anyone that comes to mind is pulling that much under 250. I know the record for. Uh, you know something? Taylor, Taylor is probably only for, well, you pulled like 900. It's not 950 though. 950 <laughs> is a big bump. That's a big bump. But again, came Jamal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man, I only re re only reason why I did the 950 is just to prove a point. Yeah, you know, like, I joke about the cheater stance, you know, but um, like that 950 should shut up a lot of trolls, you know, the 950 convention. because I think sometimes people just they're dancing around like you said too much probably wasting energy so just once you're set you go, you go so yeah it's become a bit of a trend to have a, one, yeah. a ritual for the Della setup <laughs> <laughs> yeah I was looking at your setup as well I think you can I'm, I know you like being explosive yeah. so you can do your same stance but always grab like you do under your right handed you yeah like, under right, right go right underhand right. first underhand pull the slide yeah. I mean, with your right hand, once you grab it, you can slash, slash kind of out already with, from the first hand. Ah, I'm gonna try that. I won't try that right now in the winter max, but. No, wait, um, well, I mean, on the warm ups, I could give it a shot. Yeah. It's just uh, so you can still be explosive, stand tall, when, brace. It's kind of saving yourself a step, basically. Yeah, so when, when you brace, as soon as you go down, you go ahead and pull the slack out, try to stand tall with the weight already, with that underhand. On the other hand, just pull, because once that hand is already extended and you pull the slack out, it's the only arm that can pull the bicep is your underhand. Your overhand is not the problem. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. I'll give it a shot. I'll make it a world myself. Yeah, definitely. All right. Thank you, sir. I think that makes sense. Yeah, actually, uh, no, I, that I, makes it's sense. good. Uh, well, you're, it, you, have, you have a process, and there's a reason behind it. It's not just like some random thing, so I think that's good. And I think if you could be more efficient, like so like you're saving a step there, which every little bit that you could save makes a difference. For the, for the weights that you guys are doing, if you're off like just a tiny bit, you know it's just, you're done. So if you could save a little bit, Absolutely. save a little, a little energy, a little time, be a little more efficient. Because the longer we're bigger guys, the longer we're already in the bottom of the lift. Yeah. Hunched so over. The, the less air you can breathe and the yeah. less worse position you'll be in to start the lift. You can go underhand first, try to remain long upper body wise. Then overhand, pull. Okay. Right. He's gonna go before me. Okay. Okay, need a little practice with it, but. <laughs> still here. Bit 
different happened in the last few weeks. Last week you've been more slow and methodical about your approach. And I feel like you're just wasting a lot of time in the bottom. Do you like we're telling the black Tom Cruise, like, slow down, make sure you don't yank. But when you do that, you don't give yourself time to because you, you already have tension on the bar. Okay. So that wasn't a yank, you would say, from where you're No, 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 no. Okay, well, John, John, maybe. Should I yeah, so the, still slow down a bit? I just, I, I like the, no, no, I think it's something, if you want to, we have time, so it's, if you want to practice and, like, he's also had some, you want to take advantage of his, your explosiveness. True. But you also want to make sure that you're in a good position. So you're kind of getting the best of both worlds. So you're not quite gripping and ripping it, but you're not being overly methodical. So it's kind of like a happy medium. Um, so it's just like anything else, you got to get the timing down. So I, I think it's worth trying. Uh, like I said, I, like, I didn't stiffen my core quite, quite the right way, like Jamal was saying. But you're going to save some time and you get the benefits of a quick start, a deliberate start, not wasting energy, but you're still pulling the slack off. Like, so a lot of times when you grip and rip, it can be kind of inconsistent. So you want a consistent, efficient start. So. Okay. Like, everyone do this exact same thing. Like, you want, like everyone has like the same mindset. But it's all about your approach. Everyone can approach things in a different aspect. The yes. way it's like my approach isn't the same way your approach is, and his approach might not be the same way you approach it. But we're all trying to achieve the exact same thing. Are you getting faster? Are you getting heavier? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. It tends to happen. <laughs> so with you, this is what I was saying. Like, I don't know. You might be too wide too with your feet, because you're reaching outside of your, your legs, okay. making your arms have to reach like that. So you want to be as long as you can up like with your arms. That, that means you want to go straight up, straight down. So I stand a little bit behind the bar, turn my toes out. In a suit, you you, do, you don't have the luxury <laughs> to spend that much time. You have to set up quickly. So I think it's going to be a good. Uh, so thank you, thank you for sharing that with us. It's going to be great. So I feel good for more. Yes. You know you were working like a mother. 
with uh, calluses? Yeah, I mean, I tend to shave them down, but lately I haven't had any problems, so okay. thank God. Calluses, <laughs> yeah. How are yours doing? Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Have you been moisturizing? Yep, every day. All right, very good. Well, I could say it's going to be about two and a half pounds of... Uh, yeah, this is cheese. This is like nothing. <laughs> Position, you sit up right. When you pull, 
you're just doing this throughout the lift. So push, push your hips to the floor. Okay. 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 And what about getting your hips prepared first? Because I feel going like groin here. So, so a lot of people feel like their hips aren't ready like to do sumo, but it's all about your approach, like I told you earlier. If you approach the bar differently, you'd be in a better position. So approach it like, so push your knees forward just to the slide, but too far too, too, too far, far. Too wide? Too far close to the bar. Too close. Okay. So push your knees slightly over the bar, and you go okay. down, and reach straight down between your legs. Out here. But don't push your hips back. Don't push my hips back. So push out. Push out? Yeah. Okay. You go straight down. Aha! Now that feels good. That feels good. Okay. A lot of people start doing like this and their hips be too far behind the bar. And that's when you have the hip problems trying to finish the lift. Yeah, and that's what's never made sense about sumo. Because my hips, are, how I've been taught is hips way back. But so I'm starting about here, hips over, and then just straight down. See, that feels explosive. My hips feel good. And I don't feel like I need to do any mobility work to get into that stance. Yeah. Like this feels comfortable. You know, where Dr. Della Kaler, he does like an extensive routine. To and he, he, he stands like. Right. He's just pretty much in a split. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, I don't know how he finished half this list, but he does. It's just, it amazes me, but he's strong as hell. Absolutely. Do you think Kaler would pull more if he adopted your stance and your technique? Um, Do you think this is like the optimal way? I mean, that felt great for me, like, you I don't think it's optimal. I believe it, my stance works for me. It may work for you. It may work for a hundred thousand people. Who knows? But it's all about your approach. Everyone's body moves differently. But if you approach it differently and approach it the way that it's going to fit you, like I feel like my stance fits a lot of people. Like it's really simple. It's not hard at all. Go down and you change your movement pattern and the weight moves easily. So once you try to be super technical about it, that's when you have more issues. Understood. And uh, lastly, I didn't, uh, your back position. So are you trying to stand as upright as possible or just straight down? I don't really, really focus on back position. I focus on my, like I said, I focus on my approach. As long as I approach the bar in a good position, I'll end in a good position. So I may be forward bar, but when I, again, I push myself into a block pull position, I'm not finishing it. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, that, that feels great. And conventional. Do you walk to that real quick? Conventional, I try to treat like a vertical jump. Everyone in here can do a vertical jump, right? So, <laughs> so, so, Minus one. <laughs> so I tell everyone like, just to try to do a vertical jump. Once you start like where your feet are, and my feet are really close when I start to jump. So that's my explosive position. So I stand a couple feet away from the bar. The bar is over um, in front of my laces. Well, I don't have laces on, but in front of my laces. <laughs> yeah. And I turn my feet slightly out. If your feet are too far forward, it's hard to engage your hips. Once you, just that, that little motion right there, you can squeeze your hips through the bar better. So now with my upper body, I try to be as long as possible. That's why my feet are so close. Now it's just straight up and straight down. Grab the bar. It's like a reverse squat, but the weight is in your hands. Uh, what about pushing hips back? Because I always try and get my hands as far back as I can. It's like, well, well, come here. Yeah. So, pushing your hips back is a gear lifting thing. Like, people push your hips back to engage the suit. But if you're a raw person, a raw guy, you want to keep your quads involved. Once you take your quads out of it, it's just straight back. So, when you push your knees forward over the bar, you treat it more like a squat. You get your quads involved, you get your hips involved, and you get your back involved. So you use more muscle that way. Because you're not depending on a suit to push you back forward. That makes sense. You're not loading into anything. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that some of the stuff gets, you know, sometimes some of the stuff that we were taught in the early like, 2000s was from a lot of geared lifters. Uh, and like you said, you don't have that suit to kind of load into. So yeah, if getting that leg drive off the ground, especially for, I think, conventional pullers is going to be important and it's definitely an advantage. Um, there's, there's obviously like a point where you're 
you're setting yourself too low, but you don't want to turn into a stiff leg, like you said. So I think if you're, if you're consciously pushing your hips back too much, it ends up just being kind of like a stiff leg deadlift and then your quads aren't involved at all. So again, finding that kind of sweet spot where you can kind of engage, like Jamal said, as much muscle mass as you can. Yeah. You're getting more involved in like the lift that's gonna uh, be your most successful position. So even if you like look at me from the side, like look at me from the front side, so you just, once I push my hips forward, where my hips are is in the line with my elbow. So when I begin to push, my hips don't really rise too much. Now it's just breaking my hips to my elbow. And that's the end of the motion. So I'm just pushing myself into position, and with my hips just breaking through my elbow. My elbow is always like a good indicator. Like it's the midpoint between your hands and your shoulders. So now it's just breaking through that motion. I don't know. It's a lot. I think a lot. So. <laughs> Okay. Well, listen, you definitely have some things figured out. And I think it's, as a coach, I always like to watch lifters like yourself and then kind of reverse engineer, like why was, why was Jamal successful in this lift? What were some of the things that he was doing that's maybe similar to other lifters? And what are the things maybe that were maybe different um, in the approach? And even like just like that, that little uh, nuance in the setup of like, oh yeah, why well, I pull, I pull the, you know, you're saying pull the slack out, you know, and I know, I know that you're, you know, that you're not an over under guy, but there's just like little like stylistic things that you could find helpful. And if that allows you to get in a better position or be, and or be more efficient. Uh, so these are really good and I really appreciate you coming down. Uh, was, we learned a lot. Um, I was fortunate I got some energy. I hit a, a PR at this body weight. So, uh, and it's only gonna make our team and our, our lifters better because I can take this information and then you know, we wanna use it. And like you said, it's gonna be a little bit different for each person, but the principles are gonna remain the same throughout. So this was really good. Awesome work. Oh yeah. Pretty good pulling all around. Oh yeah. And then be more over your center, your center foot. It's gonna allow for more leg drive and more quad activation. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. These are some things to work on. So like, you know, when Larry was in the 308 class, um, one of the things that he was at, his, his uh, sticking points changed. I'm sure. So like, he was starting to, as his body weight increased, he's starting to have more issues actually t toward the lockout. Um, you're kind of like in between your heaviest and, you know, he's not in the 242 days anymore. So, uh, so like it's just, his body has changed. And like you said, you mentioned off camera, the leverages are different, even just a few pounds, a little more bloated, a little not. So, so these are things you kind of have to like learn the position. So if you're going to be, if you're going to start to throw, fill out 308 or even, you know, going from 275 even to 290, you're going to have to kind of figure out the position is going to be a little bit different. Um, so I think that's, that's, that's really important. Because um, like Larry, his biggest strength is his back. Like he's, he's just brutally strong. Like, but now it's like, how do you be strong, but also be efficient with his quads and using his legs into the lift? Like you just can't always depend on your back, but it can save you. So now let's try to put yourself in the best position to use your muscle, strength. but not use it off the ground. Like you don't want to pull off the ground. Now by the time you get to your lockout, what you your back is already fatigued even though it's your, your strongest point of lift, but now it's like, let me push myself into a better position. That way when I start to use my back, I can get more out of the weight, more, more weight on the bar. That makes sense. Absolutely. It's a work in progress. We definitely, uh, like I said, appreciate the insight. And that's like one of the things that we were, I don't know if you remember Larry, when we were working towards breaking, uh, when Larry was working towards breaking Eric Lula, which is like record of 308, trying to figure out, okay, well, can we, even if we're a little bit, maybe not quite as strong off the floor, using the back off the floor, can we have a better lockout? Can we use that when we need to? So it's always a work in progress, right? Always yeah. learning, so. That's right. The craft hasn't been mastered yet. <laughs> no, but what John said about how a lot of the things we learned in our 2000s come from geared lifters, like sitting in your hips back into a suit, that is an excellent point, you know? But, you know, as times move on and sport evolves, we have lifters like Jamal who, you know, make small adjustments for raw lifters because Jamal's a raw lifter. Well, yeah. I think what, like, what, took you to 800 is not necessarily going to take you to 900. Right. So there has to be an evolution. So every time you hit a new milestone, um, you know, what took you to, you know, 2300, now to get past 20, you know, 20, you know what I mean? So there's, there's always been a progression. There's always been changes you've had to make. Absolutely. Um, you know, maybe the 500 pound bench was easy, but then like to get past 600 and, and oh, beyond, it's a different, you're in a different like realm, you know? So, Absolutely. So to Jamal's point, we're going to work on those quads. So we don't want to just always rely on the back of the deadlifts. So we're going to make sure we're getting those legs involved, and especially as a wrapped lifter, we want to make sure that we're getting, kind of keeping that raw strength and 
keeping the quads fresh. So we're gonna kind of let the knees come a little bit more forward than maybe normal. And again, really focus on the quads doing the work. So we'll do like eight to 10 here and then we'll add, we can add some weight. A little pause in the bottom, control, and then drive. Up, twist, squat down. Again, like we come straight up. Don't let your hips come kick back, okay? Good. Let's see. This is like 15 reps. So th this we are working on the hinge because we're trying to work back on the hinge. So we're gonna come here, sit. So we're gonna do the seated good morning and then just an incline crunch. So for both versions, this would be the hardest. I'm gonna come up, keep my lower back pressed into the ground and just move crunch from the upper spine only and then come back down. So that's the incline crunch and then I'm gonna do a seated good morning. Um, if you want, if it's a little light, we can hold a, a weight for the first set. So let's try, this is a new movement. So I'm just gonna bend just at my lower back, really strict. Okay. Okay. Then we need to come out of it slower. So let's try to do it at the same pace. So we're gonna come up, hold, down, three, two, one. Up, three, two, up, three. Now we're gonna do it here. So butt's back, legs out in front. Here, and we're just gonna keep our hips planted and just bend spine. So again, so now doing spinal extension, which is a spinal flexion. One, two, three, up. Good. Okay. So you feel it all in the lower back, but just the muscles, not the joint. Okay. More water. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> 
for all those deadlift peasants out there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Ooh-wee. I don't want to get too excited now. <laughs> oh, I was kind of good. Where the ab cramp? So that was fun. We had a special guest today. We sure did. We had King Jamal in the house. He had strong on and gave me on a strength. Uh, and in video, just one thing we're seeing it in person. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, is it's unreal. It's surreal. I've been around the biggest, strongest man in the world. I'm not strong as well, and no one moves weight like Jamal does on deadlifts. Yeah, I think in terms of the deadlift, he's one of the, the most, if not the most impressive guy out there right now. Uh, he's one of the only guys I haven't seen actually compete in person, so it was great to get a chance to uh, pick his brain. And like I said, as a coach, always good to reverse engineer uh, what makes these great athletes great. Uh, and we, did, we learned a couple, I learned a couple of new things, you learned a couple of new things. Sure it's always did. good to uh, assimilate new information from the top guys and it's going to make you a better lifter, it's going to make me a better coach. Hit a PR today, oh, you, yeah. hit, you hit your goal for today, uh, over 800, so it was a great day. Hell yeah, days like this to be celebrated. Uh, weight's going up too, weight's going down for you looks like. I, uh, I can, You're fat I'm, I'm, a little, right I'm a little bit, uh, I'm a little heavier <laughs> since uh, we started hanging out. I'm not sure what, what's going on, but uh, yeah, so I was like 215 today, so I'm up a few pounds, but, oh, shit. Uh, okay. but the abs are still there. They're still, I don't know, you can tell me. So. Uh, no, they're definitely still there. What do you think? I think they're still there. I don't know, you guys can tell me, you guys can comment and be like, oh, Gaglion's a fat slob again after a week. <laughs> no, but I feel good. Um, I'm, I'm going to actually do a meet. Um, my next meet's going to be as a light 242, so I need to slowly uh, put some weight back on. But I want to try to do it with without getting fat. So, um, but yeah, it's been fun hitting PRs together. We got a couple more training sessions. I'm excited. Yes. Looking forward to it. I really can't wait. It's good. Back to be uh, great to be back. It's my favorite sport, powerlifting. Um, everything feels good. That long break really did me well because. I have no ink pains anywhere, aside from some arm wrestling nags, but besides that, everything feels great, so I'm really excited for this, uh, for this meeting in October. You're crazy on arm wrestling. I yeah. get you every time. Uh, I got the bug. But you gotta have fun with it too, so as long as you stay healthy, I'm okay with it. That's yeah. it. <laughs> healthy and it's good to have some fun on the side, and I'm, I got the bug, so I might give that up anytime soon. Um, yeah, and you know what? Uh, that way Jamal broke down the sumo for me. I think I uh, might have to give sumo a try one day. I never actually tried to do one or max sumo and like prepare for it as I have a knee wraps like a knee wraps a new skill, sumo new skill. A new, you know and, and and we were saying I think off camera in a couple of videos it's really exciting to learn new skills so I'm always trying new sports it keeps training interesting for me and that's how I stay motivated to train and be the best version of myself and so I make you a better lifter just uh, getting stronger everywhere no weaknesses right that's right no weakness yeah uh, great job so yeah, guys, uh, that's a wrap. Um, guys, by the way, there's a new feature on the YouTube called Super Thanks. So if you really enjoyed this video, especially Jamal, you can now give a super thank, which is basically like a donation, a tip for the video. Um, and check out PillsOut.com for all the merch, lifting gear, stuffs, clothes, got it all. Gag me on strength, you need coaching. Um, please follow Jamal. And also Ray as he prepares to smash a 165 record. Yeah, we got we got a big a lot of big things happening in the sport in the next few months, so stay tuned.